Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. Earlier this month, the headlines were being made by the extreme and record breaking heat. But now the focus is very much on rainfall or rather the lack of it. And according to an article I read in the Times this morning, the first six months of this year have been the driest in England since 1976. In fact, the readings from my weather station here in Berkhamsted illustrate this. 210 millimetres so far in 2022, that compares to well over 300 at the same point in the year during 2021, 20 and 19. Well, are things set to change as we go through the next two weeks? I'll begin with a view of the picture across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 26th. And at the outset, there are a few showers around, but they're not amounting to a great deal as this area of high pressure builds in from the west. The same general theme continues in the short term, a lot of dry weather. Through the weekend, though, there are indications of a change, an active low pressure to the northwest and weather fronts associated with it push southeastwards across the UK and it looks as though they will be bringing heavy outbreaks of rain to the northwest. The yellow shading shows that, but will that wet weather push into southern and central counties? On this computer model run, some of it makes its way into the south, but amounts are not great at all. High pressure then builds back in from the west, but once again towards the end, there are indications of it turning more changeable, particularly in central and northern parts of the UK, the isopars packing more tightly together, wetter and windier conditions moving across those regions. But even then, it looks mostly dry in southern Britain. Just taking a quick look at the jet stream animation uh, using the same computer model run, the GFS, very weak and disorganized to begin with, typical for midsummer really, and not a great deal changes in the short term, but there are signs early next week that it will be strengthening and sinking a little bit further southwards. So just really highlighting some uncertainty about the potential, at least for rain in Southern Britain. Temperatures, to begin with, it's actually a lot cooler than it has been for much of a month, but the trend is upwards and by Thursday, values back into the mid 20s in central and eastern England at least, cooler to an extent as you head northwards and westwards. The night time lows, quite high really, especially in southern and central Britain, values of 15, 16, 17 there in the southeastern corner, cooler and better for sleeping in the north. By Saturday, that trend continues to be upwards. 24, 25, 26 in the southeast, 21 there, much of eastern Britain. This is the stage though where there is quite a lot of uncertainty about how far southwards and eastwards that area of rain will be extending. And this particular model had a little bit of rain getting into southern counties through the second half of the day. By Sunday, the rain clears away, if it reaches the south at all, that is, and it warms up once more, 27, 28 perhaps, so that's into a warmer, very warm category in the southeast, cooler once more further north, across Northern Ireland as well. It's rather a cool picture in comparison. By Monday, the 1st of August, the new month, it's still warmer again, 27, 28, 29 Celsius in the south. Not a great deal of change though in the north. It's really showing, the warming trend is really showing up in southern and central regions. Again, it's just worth remembering that through this part of the uh, animation, the early part of next week, it was looking more changeable, especially in the north as weather fronts pushed in from the Atlantic. But as I say, the south, maybe staying mostly dry, certainly on Monday and maybe even Tuesday and Wednesday. The MoGreps uh, temperature chart through the same period shows, for London shows that gentle upwards trend after a rather cool start, mid-20s are reached. So warmer 
through the first week. A little bit of uncertainty there towards the end. Some of the runs beginning to dip, but that just points towards the uncertainty about how changeable it will or will not be turning in the south. Rainfall. The five-day deterministic views from the GFS on the right, ECM on the left. The key thing on both of them is the amount of rain in the south. It remains very low. But the ECM chart on the left there does show a wetter picture in central and northern parts of the UK generally than the GFS one does. Moving forwards to the 0-10 day views, ECM again going for a wetter scenario in much of central and northern Britain, Northern Ireland as well. GFS really restricting the higher rainfall totals to the northwest, so particularly western Scotland, also perhaps parts of western Wales and northwestern England. All in all, it's a drier picture there again on the GFS, particularly in southern, central and eastern England. The Mogret rainfall chart for London is worth taking a quick look at because although it's showing some rain through the first week, the amounts are remaining low. It's a drier than average scenario. Each one of the spikes on this uh, plot shows the rain forecast from one of the runs in the Mogreps Ensemble. You can see on the left there, they're all labelled P1 down to P17. So, do the deterministic models agree with each other at the end of week one? Here is the GFS, Tuesday, August the 2nd. Areas of low pressure are bringing showers or longer spells of rain to the northern half of the UK, but it's staying mostly dry in the south. A similar story with the Canadian run. The European ECM, a few showers scattered around probably there, but mostly dry again in the south and indeed in much of the UK. Finally, the UK Met Office global run it also indicates a lot of dry weather to be found. Taking the four deterministic there together, it suggests some uncertainty. There are quite significant differences. The key point, though, is that rain amounts in the south stay very, very low. No end to the drought if those are correct through week one. What about the second week? Well, as ever, it's all about trends and probabilities rather than forecast specifics. I'll start with the 16-day GEFS ensemble plot for London. Air mass temperatures across the top. Initially, most of the individual runs are above the 30-year average, the thick black line. Then there's a dip. The ensemble mean the thick purple line falls below the thick black line. Later on, though, it climbs again, suggesting an increasing number of warm runs in the mix, and one or two are pointing towards the potential at least for hot conditions. I'll look at two meter temperatures in a moment. Across the bottom, the all-important rainfall forecasts. A few spikes show up throughout the second week, but it looks drier than average. If this is correct, the amounts of rain in the south stay low. Going up to Glasgow, the air temperature forecasts are mixed. In fact, for much of the second week, the ensemble mean, the thick purple line, is a little bit below the 30-year norm. Towards the end, it's trending upwards, so suggesting warmer weather later on. The rain risk is ongoing, perhaps somewhat drier between the 5th and the 8th of August, with fewer spikes. Towards the very end, though, the number of them increases once again. I don't really think drought is much of a problem in the northwest. Two meter temperatures, the London data table. There seems to be a dip through the first few days. The amount of dark reds, the 26 to 30 Celsius runs, decreases. The light reds, the 21s to 25s, remain dominant. So even though it's Dipping there, it's not looking particularly cool by any means, just probably close to the average, maybe even slightly above it. 
Later on though, the amount of dark red increases and some of the pink starts to return. Those are runs which are going for over 30 Celsius. So perhaps warm or very warm later on, even possibly hot by the end of the period. In the northwest, cooler as is usually the case. The oranges being dominant throughout 16 to 20 Celsius. Although there is a warming trend later on, the 21s to 25s, the number of them increases to about 32% during the last couple of days there, 29, 32%. So definitely a signal for it to be turning warmer later on. The 10-day GEFS mean surface level pressure plot, it's suggesting that the Azores high pressure will be having quite a lot of influence. It's there's some uncertainty, there's a dip there, so showers more likely in the north and the east, but it's, this chart's generated by averaging out all of the runs in the ensemble, so it can be somewhat misleading because you've got lots of different scenarios and it's just blending them all together. The mean doesn't always represent the most probable outcome. And the European ECM uh, mean pressure plot, also suggesting the resource high pressure will be having some influence, maybe something of a dip there as well. It all looks fairly typical for August, not too bad at all. Probably a greater chance of rain as you head further north. That really ties in with the other data which I've been showing. Finally, the York mean surface level pressure data table generated using the GEFS, so these are pressure forecasts from all of the individual runs, so rather than averaging them all out to get one value on each day, it's showing all the possible outcomes from the model. Yellows, 1011 to 1025 are the, in, the, in the majority on every day, and the August average is about 1013 in York, so some of the yellows are going to be a little bit below the average at 1011, but the majority of them are above that norm. So the signal is for pressure to be higher than the average, at least in central parts of the UK. And with it being centered to the, uh, to the south, to the southwest, that would also suggest higher than average pressure, at least across southern parts of Britain. As, as because it's, the pressure is expected to be building up from the Azores. So, all in all, more evidence, if any, were needed, but it looks as though rainfall in the south at least will continue to be at a premium. So to summarize, week one, through the first few days, it's mostly dry, although there will be showery rain in places. Temperatures climb and it may turn very warm in southern and central counties. During the second half of the first week, it becomes more changeable in the north and particularly the northwest, where significant rain is likely. There is a chance of wetter conditions pushing southeastwards for a time, but rain totals in the south are expected to remain very small. Week two, there's an ongoing chance of rain in the north and the west. It may also rain at times in the south, but the expectation is that it will be staying dry of an average. Temperatures dip early on, but then they trend upwards and it could become very warm or even hot in the south. So there we have it. I think the key message this week is definitely that the dry conditions are likely to continue in southern Britain. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful and enjoyed it. If you did, then I'd be very grateful as ever if you'd hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks for watching now. Bye.